There was something kind of magical about VHS tapes. Maybe it's the sound of the tape being loaded, the fuzz of the screen, or the fact that your collection sat on the shelf like a mini video store. It might just be nostalgia talking, but for those of us who grew up in the 90s, VHS wasn't just a format, it was an experience. And while I don't miss the rewinding, the tracking issues, or anything like that, I do miss the feeling of popping in a tape and knowing exactly what was about to play. So, I built something that brings back that feeling with a modern twist, and I'll show you how you can make one too. I heard a quote somewhere a while back. It went something like, when technology is sufficiently obsolete, its flaws are romanticized. That might be a bit of what I'm doing here, but I really do kind of miss physical media. There's something about the ritual of finding the movie you want to watch, opening the case, sliding it into the player, and sitting down to watch it. The intentionality of it almost makes the experience feel higher value. It was also a bit rubbish. You had to store them somewhere, you needed to rewind them, and they would wear out eventually. My copy of The Lion King was watched so many times it stopped working just after Mufasa said something about a dark place beyond the horizon. Obviously, the convenience of modern streaming and other forms of digital content distribution are much, much better in almost every way. They're higher quality, there's no tapes or DVDs to store, no loss in quality, and they don't ever wear out. But there is something missing. The physical act of putting something in a player has been lost, and with it, I think some of the magic of movie night has been lost too. When all you have to do is click around and press enter, choosing a movie doesn't feel as intentional as it was back in the day, especially because the likes of Netflix and Amazon and everyone else are really choosing what you see. I wanted to make something that would bring back some of the magic, but without losing too much of the convenience we've all come to know and love. To recreate the ritual I remember so fondly, I'd need some kind of player and some kind of tape or cartridge to put in it. Now, it wouldn't make sense for the cartridge to hold all the media itself. Instead, my cartridges will just tell the TV or media player what to play, giving me all the things I love about physical media without the poor quality or the need to rewind. So with some 3D printing and ESP home magic, that's just what I've done. Now, I'm using NFC tags to identify what media should be played back by the assigned player. These RC522 boards are only about five bucks and they'll allow this tiny ESP32 to read the contents of an NFC tag and spit that data into ESP Home where we can do whatever we'd like with it. I started by designing the cartridge. If it didn't feel right in the hand, there was no point doing the rest of this project. I took inspiration from a mix of VHS tapes, Nintendo 64 and Atari cartridges and designed my own. Inside, there's a little pocket for a 25 mm NFC sticker, plus a spot for a label with the movie title and artwork on the outside. To make sure it inserts the right way up, I added some guiding features along the side and a latch interface that connects to the player, which I'll show you in a bit. It prints in two halves, so no supports are needed, and snaps together with little snap latches on either side. With the cartridge sorted, I moved on to designing the player. I imported the cartridge model into a new file and roughed out the basic shape, then cut out a slot for the cartridge and added a pocket inside to hold it. The pocket includes a little print-in-place spring-loaded arm that gently holds the cartridge when it's inserted. I printed a few test versions, tweaking the spring length until it had the right amount of tension. The result? A satisfying little analog clunk when the cartridge clicks into place. With the mechanical design sorted, it was time to add the brains. I went with a tiny ESP32 S30 board. We only need a few pins for this project and it's small enough to tuck neatly into the enclosure. Since it doesn't have mounting holes, I designed a little pocket for it to be stuck down with some double-sided tape. 
The NFC module mounts just above the ESP board using a couple of M3 screws and some posts, carefully positioned to align with the NFC tag inside the cartridge. I could have made a custom PCB, but with just six connections to be made, some good old hookup wire will do the job just fine. Once I was happy with the final design, I ran off a version in my favorite gray and other gray vintage electronics color scheme and printed it all out. While I was at it, I ordered another very special version. PCBWay, as the name suggests, are best known for their PCB manufacturing. But what you might not know is that they also offer some genuinely impressive 3D printing services, including some materials most of us would never print at home. For this project, I wanted to make a special version of the player, one that looked like the cool, clear electronics we all grew up with in the 90s. Think Game Boy, old school Macs, or transparent cassettes. And for that, I needed clear resin. I printed the rest of the player on my home printer, but for the clear version, I send the files off to PCBWay. They offer SLA resin printing along with SLS, FDM, and even metal 3D printing. Things like stainless steel, titanium, and other exotic materials are all available through their service. So whether you're looking for something super detailed, ultra tough, or just impossible to make on a typical hobby printer, PCBWay can handle it. And they ship it straight to your door in just a few days. So if you've got a design that deserves something a little special, check out PCBWay's 3D printing service. There's a link in the video description down below. Big thanks to PCBWay for supporting this video. I wired everything up outside the enclosure to make life easier, then taped the ESP into place and secured the NFC module with a couple of screws. I also added a tiny buzzer for some extra feedback from the automations. The cartridge pocket slots into the top half of the enclosure and is held in with a couple of countersunk screws through the front of the enclosure. Then the whole thing closes up with a couple more screws. And that's the player done. Next up was finishing my cartridges. The cartridges are designed to fit a sticker in the same aspect ratio as posters from the movie poster database. They don't take much filament and they're super easy to print. I printed a little collection of some of mine and Brit's favorite movies and franchises and used my plotter to cut them to the perfect size. I've included the DXF file and a printable template over on the blog so you can design and cut your own. You don't need a plotter, you can just use some scissors that works fine. And of course, all the poster designers are credited in the blog post as well. Lastly, we need to program the player. And as usual, we're using ESP Home and Home Assistant to make this all work. This setup relies on a couple of integrations. In my case, I'm using the Android TV remote integration and Plex integration to handle media playback based on which cartridge is inserted. The Android TV integration handles turning on the TV and launching apps, and from there, I can trigger playback in Plex or even queue up YouTube videos. The code running on the ESP is dead simple. It just reports when a cartridge is inserted along with the ID from the NFC tag. All the real magic happens in Home Assistant. I've set up an automation that turns on the TV, AVR, and Android TV box when a cartridge is inserted. Then it uses a choose block to play specific media based on the cartridge ID. To add a new cartridge, all I need to do is copy that tag's ID and add it to the automation with whatever I want it to play. That's it. It's really simple and it's all done in the Home Assistant UI. It does take a little bit of setup, but it's pretty straightforward and I've included a bit of a how-to in the tutorial video on the Sourceman. After a bit of testing and troubleshooting, I had my very own digital but physical movie collection. This little gadget really scratches the tactile itch for physical media. 
it brings back those nostalgic vibes big time. For an extra dose of fun and nostalgia, I put together some box sets of my favourite franchises using concept art to recreate that special edition VHS feel. You know the ones, the shiny slip cases, slightly too wide to stack properly with the rest of the collection. I also made cartridges for a few of my favourite YouTube channels that queue up a random playlist of their videos, plus a couple for my nephew's favourite shows. If you're keen to build your own, there's a full bill of materials on the website, and I've put together a parts kit you can pre-order. It includes all the electronics, hardware, and some NFC tags to get your collection started. You'll just need a printer and a soldering iron. Or you can grab the pre-soldered and pre-programmed version if you'd prefer plug and play. And by popular request, I've made some kits for the everything remote too, in case you'd like to build one of those to go with your new player. Working on this project reminded me of how physical media shaped the way I experienced movies growing up. We only had a couple dozen tapes and DVDs and we'd watch them over and over every school holidays. Each time we'd catch something new, a background detail, a joke we were finally old enough to understand. Hey Ham, look, I'm Picasso. Hey, I don't get it. You uncultured swine. What are you looking at, you hockey puck? Those movies became part of a kind of family lore for us. I still quote random lines from obscure Steve Martin movies from the late 80s and 90s. I'm convinced everyone who grew up in the 90s or 2000s has at least one inside joke with their family from like a bargain bin obscure movie that their family picked up. Cat fat? Mm-hmm. We eat cat. Excuse me? Share yours in the comments. I bet we could out obscure each other with our, our family movie references. Physical media also gave my parents an interesting way to curate what we had access to in terms of media. Plus the autonomy I had as a child to pick my own movies from our collection gave me an opportunity to develop my own taste in films to a degree. I don't have kids yet, but something like this could totally recreate some of those benefits for parents without a lot of the drawbacks. You could even tweak the automations to limit the volume for kids content or restrict playback times. And for adults like me, it just makes movie night feel a bit more special. You're not limited to movies either. These cartridges could launch a playlist in YouTube Music or Spotify, or even turn on a smart plug to power up a console. Like anything in Home Assistant, your imagination is the only limitation. So, what do you think? Would you go back to the old ways at, at least a little, just for nostalgia's sake? I know it's not exactly practical, but it scratches my itch for the ritual of physical media and it's made movie nights a little bit more special. If you want to build one of your own, I've made a full tutorial over on the saucepan with the files, templates and YAML you'll need on the website. And if you'd like, you can grab a kit from the website and save having to source it all yourself. If you like this video, tell the algorithm by hitting like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. If not, let me know why I'm always looking to improve. Thanks a bunch for watching and I can't wait to share the next one with you. Catch you next time.